Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today we're going to create a faux limestone finish for this miniature gothic fireplace and top it off by adding a faux soot effect. Now, this is the piece as it was originally created and finished. It's pretty, but it doesn't have a lot of character. To begin the process of adding character to this piece, I'm using some very intense do-it-yourself coffee stain with a little bit of brown and black acrylic craft paint. The coffee stain is used to dilute the consistency of the acrylic craft paints, making a loose, watery wash. But unlike a wash that's made strictly with black acrylic craft paint, the warm tones of both the coffee stain and the brown paint add a richness and depth to this wash. To begin the process, I'm going to paint this wash over the entire surface, making sure that it gathers in all of the nooks and crannies and that we don't have any exposed stark white at the end of the process. The goal is to create a nuanced and organic feeling blend of tones. While the wash is still damp, I'm selectively removing it with an old t-shirt. And then in strategic areas like inside of the firebox, I'm adding an additional layer of the wash just to darken things up and to intensify the effect of shadow and grime. Additional layers of the dark wash are being added in areas that would naturally be more shadowed. Underneath all of the profiles of the piece and beneath the heraldic shield on the overmantel. And after each application, the excess wash is being wiped away. Now, I'm a fan of heavy grunge effects, and I actually really like the way the piece looks at this stage. But I wanted to challenge myself this time and try to create an effect that's a little more subtle and less heavy handed than my usual intense grunge look. So I'm preparing what amounts to a series of underlayers that will create very gentle gradations in shading as layers of lighter colored pigments will be added on top. So we're beginning with a heavy hand and creating a lot of darkness and dirt. Here I'm intensifying the shadowing effect beneath the shelves, etc using an even darker blend of that wash and then wiping it back. After the first layers of extremely dark wash have been added, I continue to dilute the wash so that it's very transparent. And then this is being brushed over all of the exposed surfaces and allowed to collect into all the declivities. The treatments being applied to the same areas over and over again, building up a set of layers over time. Again, the idea is to create an exaggerated version of what I'd like to see on the finished piece using these darker pigments and then I will be toning everything down and adding the final faux soot treatment at the very end of the process. For now, I'm just going over the top with the dark washes 
establishing a layer of grime and antiquity. Once I'm happy with the level of shadowing and grunge, I'm going to allow this to dry. The first step in taming all of this grunge is to dry brush with a plain white acrylic craft paint. I get a little onto the bristles of a small flat bristled brush and wipe most of it away. And then holding the brush in an almost horizontal position, I lightly apply the pigment to the uppermost layer. This helps to call out the complex texture that was created with the cardstock overlays. I'm beginning very gently here, not exactly certain just how much I want to emphasize the background and the darkness in juxtaposition with the lighter tones being placed on top. I do know that I want the overmantle to really catch the eye. So I'm taking care to apply the dry brushing technique to all of the subtle textures there. Once the first pass of dry brushing is complete, I stop to evaluate the results. And I realize that I'm really not happy with the intensity of the contrast between the foreground and the background. And I'm also realizing that for some reason, this time, I want a cleaner look than is typical for me. So, instead of the very light-handed approach that I took at the beginning of the dry brushing process, I find myself being a bit more bold in my application of the white paint. The receding arches that make up the front of the firebox are also a feature that I want to make certain is going to catch the eye of the viewer. So here, more of the white paint is being applied in order to emphasize the leading edges of each of the arches, while still allowing a small amount of the grime and grunge to show through. The same treatment is being applied to the front of the supports. I begin by highlighting the leading edges, evaluating the effect, and then going back in to soften it by adding more of the white tones. This is done on the interior surfaces as well. And after another evaluation, I realize that there's still too much intensity of contrast for the vision that I have in mind. So I mixed up a blend of a soft dove gray and made it quite watery so that this could be applied not everywhere, but to a large portion of the surface. And yet some of the darker tones from beneath would continue to show through the transparency of this wash. The more I work with miniatures, the more I begin to appreciate that I need to learn lighter handed techniques in order to pull off the effects that I'm going for. This change in scale from general mixed media artwork to pieces that are specifically designed to mimic real life counterparts calls for a change in a lot of my techniques and I'm learning as I go. This piece has taught me so much in so many ways. What I'm finding here is that at a small scale those intense differences between the shadowed and darkened areas and the lighter upper surfaces read as just over exaggerated and not very believable at least to my eye 
So each pass being made here with the lighter paints is increasing the subtlety of contrast and decreasing the starkness. At this stage, I'm actually really happy with the finish, which surprises me, but this is what felt right to me. And I'm ready to begin applying faux soot. And this is really simple. It's more a matter of how it's applied and where it's applied than what you apply. Again, I'm beginning with do-it-yourself coffee stain and diluting black acrylic craft paint with that until it's a pretty watery blend. The important part is that I'm now using an acid brush which has extremely coarse and stiff bristles. Each bristle tip will deposit a tiny dot of darkness and it's the aggregated dots that create what feels like an authentic sooty effect. The mixture is picked up on the bristles of the brush and the majority of it is scrubbed off using a scrap piece of paper. Then a combination of very short and sharp brush strokes and pouncing techniques are used to apply a patchy layer of this darkness to the surfaces where we want it to look as though soot has accumulated over the long centuries. Now soot behaves in an interesting manner. As smoke comes out of the front of a fireplace, it travels up the wall and up the front surfaces, depositing little particles of soot primarily on the lower or downward facing surfaces. Unlike snow or rain which fall from above and leave downward streaking effects onto masonry or wood, smoke and soot travels from the base of the fire up the front of the adjacent surfaces and accumulates most heavily on the undersides of any horizontal planes that it encounters. So the underside of each of these featured areas is being accentuated with heavier applications of the sooty mixture. The upper surfaces of the fireplace, the top of the shelves, etc are left almost devoid of any soot effect. Concentrating the effect where smoke would pool and gather as it travels up the front of the fireplace leaves traces of soot in these areas and leaves the areas that the smoke wouldn't encounter relatively free of any marks at all. And finally, a heavier layer of darkness and soot is being applied in the mouth of the firebox and up the back of the chimney area to indicate where the soot would have gathered most heavily. In upcoming videos, we'll add even more detail to this fireplace in the form of a whole set of miniature accessories and perhaps a few logs as well. But for now, we'll leave it at this. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that this video has been useful to you in some way. Until next time, bye.